Okay, now we're going to be transitioning from fluid statics to fluid dynamics. And to that end, before we can proceed, we have to add a couple more assumptions to our ideal fluid. We've already talked about an, that an ideal fluid is incompressible, that you can treat it as a, basically a bag of molecules where the molecules are free to slide around each other, but no matter what you do, the um, the fluid keeps its exact same volume. The two additional things that we need to add. Um, we need to add that it's non-viscous, which basically means that there's no fluid drag. Um, and then we also need to add the condition of laminar flow. So what do we mean by laminar flow? Probably best visualized if we think about an airplane wing flying through the air. As it flies through the air, the air is going to have to separate and move around the airplane wing. Like so. And so what we say is that the fluid is moving in streamlines. Um, basically adjacent bits of fluid move in parallel-ish directions, and there isn't any crossing of the streamlines or anything like that. Um, this is good normal configuration for an airplane wing. Um, if an aircraft goes too slowly for the attitude that it's pointing at, it can get into a condition called a stall. Um, and there what happens is the is that the streamlines have a hard time reconnecting and you wind up getting turbulence happening behind the wing and then the aircraft drastically loses lift so pilots get trained to avoid to avoid a stall condition um, there are special devices in aircraft to tell them when they're just about to go into a stall and they're trained to do certain maneuvers to make sure that they will get out of a stall before anything bad happens. So anyway, these are, are the additional assumptions we need in order to talk about, sensibly talk about moving fluid. <clears throat> so, in this end, we will look at the equation continuity. Now, the equation continuity and Bernoulli's equation, which we'll get into in the next video, are things that are well worth studying if you're planning to go on to taking uh, electricity and magnetism later. Um, it turns out that you will run into these again. Um, when you do electricity, the equation continuity will be known as Kirchhoff's node or junction law. And Bernoulli's equation will be known as Kirchhoff's loop or mesh law. So what I'm imagining here is, you know, if you put your thumb over a garden hose, um, we all know that the water starts going out faster. So what's up with that? Well, the key assumption of continuity is that since the fluid is incompressible, however much volume passes one location in a certain amount of time has to pass by another, some other location in that same amount of time. So say this is one of the locations we're looking at, this is the other one. We need, in some amount of time delta t, we need these two volumes to be the same. So here, this side is going to have an area A1. This will have an area A2. And then we'll say that this length here um, is delta X1. And in the same amount of time, this distance delta X2 had to go past our other observation point. Okay. So we define the volumetric flow rate, Q, um, to be the volume that passes by this location 
in amount of time. Um, well, if you think about that, that's going to be the volume is going to be a times delta x over delta t. So we can say that the volumetric flow rate is a v. And by the way, this symbol doesn't get used very much, and we'll be recycling it very quickly to be used for heat transfers. There are historic reasons why the symbol is the same, but I'm not getting into those. Anyway, the equation continuity says that for an incompressible fluid, but the, this is observation point one, that's observation point two, we need Q1 to equal Q2. Or the way, or we can also write this A1 to V1 equals A2 V2. The way I like to think about it is just stuff in has to equal stuff out, or else stuff will pile up until it does. Now, if, so here, when we make the construction smaller, the speed of the fluid has to go up. Now there is another concern, and that is what if there's more than one branch? Um, so if there's more than one branch, so let's say we got a whole bunch of pipes all coming together into some kind of crazy junction here. So We've got volumetric flow rate Q1 going into this pipe, Q2 going in there, say Q3 going in there, Q4 going out there, Q5 going out there. What we're going to require in a complicated situation like this is Q net in equals, oops, Q net in equals Q net out. So in this example here, we would be demanding that Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 equals Q4 plus Q5. So to make this a little more concrete, let's imagine that we've got two rivers that are flowing together. To make a bigger river. So tributary number one has water flowing at, let's say 500,000 liters per second, and in tributary number two here has water flowing in at a million liters per second. Now, just to make things a little more fun, let's say the width of the main river here, we'll just say it's river three, um, is 150 meters wide, and we will say that, pardon the very bad attempt at drawing in some sort of perspective here, we'll say that the depth is 10 meters. All right. I'm just going to say 10 meters. Sorry about that. I'm just going to say 10 meters deep. That looks like crap. All right, 10 meters deep. So, Continuity is going to require that Q3 equal Q1 plus Q2. And we know that Q3 would be equal to A3 V3. Um, so V3, which is what we want to know, would be equal to Q1 plus Q2 over A3, which would be Q1 plus Q2 over L times W. 
Okay. So one of the things we have to remember is that a liter is a cubic decim decimeter. So when we are putting in these units, we're going to have to make sure to do our conversions properly. So V3 is going to equal, all right, we said Q1 was 500,000 liters per second plus a million liters per second. And then because a liter is a cube, a tenth of a meter on the side, there are going to be 10 by 10 by 10 of these cubes in a cubic meter. So there's a thousand liters per cubic meter. And then probably then this is going to be 150 meters times 10 meters. Okay, <clears throat> so we can work out the uh, units here. We lose two powers of meters there, that's good. And we lose our liters there. So we're left with meters per second, that's good. Um, we can lose three powers there and there. Um, so you end up getting one meter per second. Okay. In the next video, we will go on to uh, develop Bernoulli's equation and take a look at what happens um, if the uh, fluid is changing height. Catch you in the next one.